So tiebacks. Now I'm back to the to another copy of the of the initial diagram, right? Or initial drawing. We already have the neck active force on the wall. Should have not had that. Be, I should have uh, made copies before I wrote that. But anyway. So I was saying that if your factor safety is low and you still want to keep a wall like that, or let's say you cannot increase the size of the footing because then you would have to excavate this material to be able to build the footing, meaning to increase its size uh, or to build a bigger footing essentially and then backfill, that costs money so perhaps less money um, is can be used to buy and to construct a system of what are called tiebacks so a tieback and I'm going to draw one here in the profile a tieback is basically uh, constructed as follows you drill a hole, and there are many different types, and, and but this is a typical type. You drill a hole to a certain distance, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Then you insert in this hole, which may have a casing, you insert a rebar, or a group of rebar, or a cable, or a group of cable, steel cable, St steel cables, if it's a group, of course. Okay? Then you insert a, a hose, essentially, and you grout with, um, with cement, a cement-water uh, mixture, or cement water and maybe very fine sand mixture. You inject that in there so that you, you essentially grout the rebar or the group of rebars or the cable or the group of cables in place. Okay, so if you were to be able to see through the soil, you would see kind of a um, a bulb made of the cured uh, cement water <coughs> or cement water fine sand mixture. Okay, it's like a concrete, but with with very fine aggregate and no no reinforcement. The reinforcement is actually the the bar that you put in there. Okay, once that cures, you place a a plate essentially with a hole so that you can you can have a portion of the cable let's let's say that this is just one cable okay so you have a portion of the cable coming out like that and then what you do is you you have a machine that basically holds the plate in place while pulling pull while pulling on this cable so what that does be, is it puts the whole system here in tension and that tension pulls on the wall against the soil. Once that, when this is going on, you place a wedge here, so that when you release the pull, or the pull, when you release this force of pulling, the cable remains wedged, and this remains in tension. Therefore, the wall remains pulled by the cable, which is grouted, uh, and anchored to the soil due to this grout, right? Uh, the wall remains or hopefully there's a force well let's not say hopefully there is a force if do, you do that correctly there is a force that um, that presses on the wall that pulls the wall back into the soil essentially okay so that force acts like that and we call it T for tension okay so how does this get um, one sec. How does this get uh, in or placed or embedded in the design process or in the factor safety analysis? Well, the factor safety for sliding, we said that it was the res frictional resistance on the base divided by the net active, right, force. So this is the good force that is helping the wall not slide, and this is the bad force or some of those three forces that is pushing on the wall. So over here, in the good side, we should add this T. Because that, that is a force that can develop in that is in, in that is contrary or in opposite direction to the net active force um, of the soil, basically which is pushing the wall out, or trying to push the wall out, or trying to make it slide in this case. So um, let's think. Of, let's look at units now, just to make sure that everything is right. This is in kilonewton per meter. This is in kilonewton per meter. 
This is in kilonewton. Okay, because when you hire a contractor that can that that will come in and and, and um, construct tiebacks for your wall, okay. What they will that what they work with is in is in forces. So they'll tell you, okay, we have a set of tiebacks that can, you know, this tieback here can support seventy kips. This one over here can well, let's talk in, in other units, right? In these units. So they'll tell you this tieback here uh, can support one hundred kilonewton. This one over here three hundred kilonewton. So which one do you want? Okay. So before you think of which one you want, you need to realize that. You cannot put a kilonewton here and add kilonewton to kilonewton per meter. You need to have kilonewton per meter here. So, what value of distance do you use? You have to divide by some distance, right? The value that they provide, the contractors, by some distance. That distance is the spacing between the tiebacks. So you have to re remember, this wall extends very long into and out of the paper. If you look at the wall, if you stand here, and you look at the wall this way, the wall looks like this, right? It's just, I mean, it's just a wall. I don't even know how to draw it. Over here, there's, there's a tree. Here's the tree, right? Over here, and you're standing here, looking at the wall. So here's a tieback, this one right here. Here's the cable kind of extruding out like this from the from the wall, right? And of course they cut it after they, they they pull it and wedge it so that you don't have a piece of cable coming out of the wall like that. Anyway, we're trying to figure out, remember, the, the, the value here. That is a distance. It is the spacing between tiebacks. This is a very long wall. Generally, walls are long compared to how they are high, okay? So, if you place a tieback here and a tieback here and a tieback here, etc 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 this distance which I call S okay spacing spacing between tiebacks is what goes here why because each tieback is responsible for a for a distance equal to S if this is S then this is S if they are equally spaced which they are almost 100% of the time so now you have frictional resistance plus the tieback force for the tieback that you select divided by the spacing. So the spacing you also select divided by the net active force. This is a good one, good one, and this is a bad one. Bad meaning that it drives a f it drives the sliding. It wants to make the wall slide. It drives a failure. Okay. So notice what happens here. You can choose a tieback system that is very strong. In that case, you would have to, you would need a smaller spacing, right, to get a factor of safety, let's say equal to two or whatever. Okay. You can also say, well, I, I would like to purchase less, uh, sorry, tiebacks that are less strong. Okay, but I, I want, I the, in that case, I would need many of them, meaning that this would be small. So you would have them like this. Right, so the spacing would be small, and that would also lead to factor safety of two. So the difference generally is the cost between those two options that I just mentioned. Um, you may want, again, smaller tiebacks, but then you would need more of them, meaning that this is small. Or you would want maybe larger tiebacks or stronger tiebacks, in which case you would need less of them, right? So this is large. So you have to play around with these numbers and the cost, of course. Okay. Now, just one last thing. How far does the tieback has to have to extend into the into the backfield? Well, if you go back to the arguments and the concepts, um, the Rankine's concepts, actually, you would come here and say, okay, this is the in this case leftmost, uh, sorry, rightmost point in the in the wall, right on the wall. So if I draw a line like that, where this value is 45 plus phi over 2, and in this case this phi would have to be some, some average of these two, okay? 
So if this angle is that, that means that the soil in here is the one that is in the active condition and the soil back here is not. So then you would extend this tie back such that it crosses that imaginary line a certain distance. Okay, This distance, let's call it x, you see that? Yeah. So that distance x should be generally between 0.3 to 0.5 of the whole distance. The whole distance is from here to here. Okay. 0.3 to 0.5. 0.3 is a minimum, you can make it very, very long, but you would not gain too much. So this this is really more, um, this X and this criterion here is more a contractor's criterion, and the reason why they want to embed it this much is of course for safety so that it's well anchored. Okay, if you anchor, if you anchor it, let's say, up to here, you only rely on this part of the anchor, right? Which may actually be pulled out by the tension itself. Okay, so you want to have a certain amount, a certain distance, x, 0.3 to 0.5 of the whole thing, so point, a third to a half of the whole thing behind this imaginary line, okay, so that you have proper anchoring.